Hi everybody, Jeremy Siskind here. I am the author of so many great books about jazz piano. You got your Jazz Piano Fundamentals series, uh, which are kind of for people trying to get those fundamentals of jazz down. They give specific assignments uh, week by week for different lessons, but also playing solo jazz piano, which is kind of a compendium of playing uh, of solo piano devices that you can learn from. Um, and I'll mention that I've debuted a new feature in my video descriptions, which is the uh, buy me a coffee feature. If you guys are enjoying this content, find it useful, want to throw me some money, I'd be honored, but no pressure. Um, okay, today, you know, I made a lot of videos and it's hard to believe that I've never covered this concept because it's really important. We're gonna talk about modes of the melodic minor scale. So people know about modes of the major scale, the modes of the melodic minor scale are nearly as important for jazz impro improvisation. We're gonna see as we go through that, you know, some of these are really, really crucial modes um, for improvising, for comping, and to be a versatile jazz musician. So um, I think I'm going to use this. Um, and so I'm giving you two different versions of each mode. On the left-hand side, I have to point right for the left-hand side, uh, on the left-hand side down here is going to be modes that use C melodic minor as the parent scale. And so a few things as we get started here, when we say melodic minor in jazz, we are talking about a scale that's just like the major scale, but has a lowered third. So you can see that this C melodic minor has only an E flat, everything else is natural. If you're classically trained, you might be familiar with people playing the melodic minor scale differently, going up and going down. But when we talk about the melodic minor in jazz and modes of the melodic minor, we are only talking about the ascending form of that scale, which like I said, is just like the major scale, but with a flat third. Okay, so the, um, the left-hand side is um, going to be what I call modes of C melodic minor, meaning that they're all using those same pitches as C melodic minor, they're all gonna have only an E flat, but they're gonna start on different notes. On the right hand side, down there, down there, um, are modes starting on the note C. So these are going to involve pitches from different melodic minor scales, all starting on the note C. So I know it's like kind of just so nerdy and in the weeds, but these ones are notes of C, or modes of C, these are modes on C. And for each of these, what's really important as we're thinking about different scales and different groups of pitches is that we want to know what chord we might associate it with. Now, we should say these relationships are not so simple. It's not one to one, but it is useful to figure out these sorts of equivalencies. Um, but context is always important. So C melodic minor generally can go with the chords C minor six or C minor major seven. Um, and of course, this is the one moment where we're gonna see on both sides that these modes are the same, but they're going to diverge from here. So here's your second mode of the melodic minor. Um, and this mode sounds like this. chord that this goes with is going to be a D sus, let's just say seven flat, uh, flat nine. <laughs> let's try that again. D sus seven flat nine. Um, and this is important because it has the natural 13. So if we want to be really specific about this chord symbol, we'd say D sus 13 flat nine. The reason that's important is that the the Phrygian mode also goes with a sus flat nine chord, but that one has a flat 13. So the Phrygian mode in D would have a B flat. It's a little darker. Versus this one. Okay. If we play it on C, starting on C, the one on the right. Sorry. Like it just feels a little more hopeful than Phrygian. Phrygian is so dark. But 
this has a little bit more of a glimmer of hope. So this would go with a C sus seven flat nine, or again, to be more specific, we could say C sus 13 flat nine. Names for melodic minor modes are not as well established as, mo as names for major modes, right? In major modes, we name them things like Dorian, Aeolian, Lydian. Most of the melodic minor name modes that names that I've heard are just based on names of the major modes. So a lot of times I'll hear people call this Dorian flat two or Phrygian raised six. I bet some other folks have heard other names. Feel free to comment in the comments. Um, I don't pretend to know everything. Uh, I don't pretend to know much at all. So there's your second mode. Probably not the one you're gonna necessarily use the most. Here's your third mode. So now we're starting the C melodic minor from E flat. And we um okay, so name-wise, we often might call this Lydian sharp five or Lydian augmented. And I think that's the more common name, right? And augmented just generally means sharp five. And this would go with an E flat major seven sharp five. Um, I forgot the major sign in there. E flat major seven sharp five or Something a little more specific, we could say E flat augmented major seven, sharp 11. But generally, if we have a sharp five, we also have a sharp four, because otherwise we have a weird interval pattern. So uh, that's why it's not necessary, necessarily, in that first chord symbol to specify the sharp 11, because otherwise we kind of end up with this other kind of scale. Um, starting on C. There's that C Lydian augmented. Again, I would probably use it with these two chord symbols or C augmented major seven sharp 11. This isn't really part of this video, but one tip for learning these modes is to find two different chords that have most or all of the notes of the chord of the mode. So instead of thinking about, oh, how am I gonna remember this melodic minor scale? I would maybe think something like um, E dominant seventh and D major. If I can remember those two shapes or even just E triad and D major triad, then I have almost every note of the mode, right? That's six out of the seven notes of the mode. So that can be a lot faster than trying to memorize the scales and whatnot. All right, this one is really, really important. This is the fourth mode of the melodic minor. Um, and this does have a pretty standard name as far as I'm aware, which is Lydian dominant. Lydian because it has a sharp four as compared to the major scale. Dominant because it has a flat seven as compared to the major scale. So we'd compare that to the F major scale on the left and the C major scale on the right. And the Lydian dominant goes with a dominant seventh sharp 11th. We use this one so much in jazz. Sounds like this. Close that parentheses. Um, and we see a lot of dominant seventh sharp 11 chords and a lot of chords that are not, a lot of dominant chords that are not functioning as a five chord want this treatment badly. For, for instance, if you are playing take the A train, second chord is D7 sharp 11. It's a dominant chord, but it's not a five of anything. It's not leading to, to G minor, right? D7 is not leading to G minor at all there. This dominant seven sharp 11, uh, this Lydian dominant mode is what you want to use there. Um, same thing, the backdoor 2-5 progression, if you're familiar with that, uses the dominant chord a whole step below the root that you're aiming for. So for instance, B flat seven leading to C major. 
also really wants to use this Lydian dominant mode. So um, when you have a dominant chord again that's not functioning as a five chord, try out this Lydian dominant sound. Sometimes it might be specified, sometimes it might not. This next one's really pretty. So this is the fifth mode. The mode of C starts on G. The mode on C is the F melodic minor. And um, the most common name I've heard for this is Mixolydian flat six. And this goes with a G7 flat 13, or sometimes you see it notated as G7 flat six. C7 flat 13 or C7 flat six. <laughs> This one's not as useful as you might think because so often when we have a flat 13, we also have a flat nine. And that opens up a whole other realm of possibilities. Um, but we do add a lot of flat 13s in jazz, so you might use this. Moving right along, this is uh, very used, especially in uh, more modern jazz. Sixth mode here. Um, ooh, sorry about that. And we generally call this the Locrian raised two or the Locrian natural two. Um, it's all like raised from what? Or Locrian plus two. And this goes with half diminished chords. And half diminished chords are a fascinating topic. We can't get too deep into it um, today, but half diminished chords can have either a lower or a higher ninth. And so these go with the half diminished chords that have a higher ninth. In particular, six chords in minor keys, which will almost always have a raised or a higher ninth. So that's that ninth is the distinctive note here. So if I were to play you the normal Locrian, that would have a B flat in the key of A or on it, on it, on an A chord instead of a B natural. Same thing in C, here's your Locrian natural two or raised two. Versus regular Locrian is darker. That implies a minor key much more. So that is one of the options that we go to a lot on half diminished chords. And then lastly, um, this is probably the most important one. I've made a whole other video about this one. I'll try to link it here. Uh, this is the seventh mode and it goes by a few names. I generally call it the altered scale, but lots of people call it the super Locrian. And I learned that it's called the super Locrian, um, because everything gets flatted other than the root. Am I saying that right? Yes. Every single thing gets flatted. You can see in the C. So as compared to the C major scale, everything is lowered by a half a step. And then sometimes people call it the diminished whole tone. Uh, this is really, really common to use for dominant chords, particularly if it's notated as a B, as an altered chord. Seventh mode of the melodic minor. And this is important because it has, and I'll start from the very first note, the root, the flat ninth, the sharp ninth, the third, even though it's in the fourth position, major third, then the sharp 11th or flat fifth, and the sharp fifth or flat 13th. So it's got all four of our juicy altered tones. Oh, and then lastly, the dominant seventh. It's got all four of our juicy altered tones, um, plus the third and the seventh, the two key notes for a dominant chord. So it's hitting the most colorful notes. <laughs> wonder why it's called the diminished whole tone. Well, the first four notes are the same as the octatonic or diminished scale, where we alternate between half steps and whole steps. And then the last four notes are all arranged in whole steps, like the whole tone scale. So it's kind of almost like the smashing together of uh, those two scales. All right, I want to make a little chart for you, if you'll allow me. 
Uh, we'll change the views here. So here I've got three columns. One is for the name of the scale, which I should have made bigger. The next is for the number of axes, the, which accents we'll, we'll use it for starting the mode on C. And then we're going to have the chord symbol or chord symbol. So first one is melodic minor. If we're starting it on C, it would just have an E flat. Chord symbols, C minor six or C minor major seven. The next one, I think Dorian lowered two is probably gonna be the most common name. This will have D flat, E flat, and that's it. Um, and this would be C sus, flat nine, or the more specific one, C sus 13, flat nine. All right, putting them too close together. I'm gonna try to space them out more. So uh, the third one is going to be uh, Lydian augmented. If we start this on C, we're going to have F sharp and G sharp. And this one could be C augmented major seven, sharp 11, or I would also just use this if it's a regular C major seven, sharp five. All right, and then we get to Lydian dominant, right? One of the most important modes. Starting on C, this has an F sharp and a B flat. Isn't it interesting to have um, a mode that has two, like a sharp and a flat mixed? Melodic minor gets really interesting in these kinds of ways. And that would be for a C7 sharp 11. I don't think there's any other option there. That's just what it goes with. Um, all right, then we have our Mixolydian flat six. Well, I really hope I'm keeping all of this straight. Um, and starting on C, that would have an A flat and a B flat because it's like the F melodic minor. And this would generally be with a C7 flat six or a C7 flat 13. But remember, make sure that that C7 flat 13 doesn't also have a flat nine, because then you're gonna probably wanna use uh, the altered scale, which we will get to very shortly. All right, then we have the Locrian natural two or Locrian raised two. And starting on C, that's gonna have a heck of a lot of, um, a heck of a lot of, of accidentals. Um, right, e flat, G flat, A flat, and B flat. I think I got that right. Because it's like the E flat melodic minor. And that goes with a half diminished chord. Um, particularly, really specifically, if you have C half diminished ninth, right? That is going to kind of define that it is a natural ninth. That would be like the D natural. And you're definitely going to want to use that Locrian raised too. And then lastly, we have the one, three different names. I'm going to call it the altered scale. You can see it's very different in terms of its name than the other ones. If we start on C, everything other than the C is going to be changed. And it changes so much that the what we think of as the major third of the chord is going to be in the fourth position. And this goes specifically with a C7 alt, but we really use this with any uh, dominant chord that has both the fifth and the ninth altered. So C7, flat five, flat nine, C7 flat nine, flat 13. If it doesn't have a natural fifth and a natural ninth, then we will use that scan. All right, take your screenshot if you want um, and uh, try to process this information. Um, and thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, um, please like, subscribe, check out my books, best purchased on jeremysiskin.com. Um, and if you feel like using that new buy me a coffee function, I would love to know that it works. So that'd be cool. Um, and thanks so much for watching.